Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation, a special one. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. Obviously, as a method, you could use the cubic formula, right? That would be one of the methods. What about the other method? The, the other method is actually fairly interesting. We're going to be using some special methods. Anyways, let's do the first method first. So I'm going to use the cubic formula for this. And if you remember, for the cubic formula, we take advantage of an identity, which is a plus b quantity cubed minus 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. This just comes from, you know, a plus b quantity cubed, and we just arrange the terms. Here, I'm going to make substitution. Let's call this x a plus b, set it equal to x. And then if you compare this equation to the other equation, like I can write this as x cubed minus 3abx equals a cubed plus b cubed, you're going to notice that the coefficient of x is negative 3, and here it's negative 3ab. So 3ab must equal 1, and a cubed plus b cubed is the constant term, which also needs to equal 1. So we get a very basic system from here. Let's go ahead and write it down a cubed plus b cubed equals 1, and ab equals 1. Let's go ahead and cube both sides here. That gives us a cubed b cubed equals 1. Now we got a good system, and this is actually quadratic. Why? I'll show you. We can go ahead and isolate one of the variables. Let's go ahead and isolate b cubed. We can write b cubed as 1 minus a cubed, and then substitute here. Let's see, a cubed times b cubed, which is 1 minus a cubed, equals 1. And then if you distribute, a cubed minus a to the 6th power equals 1. And then this is a to the 6th power minus a to the 3rd plus 1. Oh my god, it's like a 6 degree equation. Don't worry about it, no big deal, because this is quadratic. If you replace a cubed with c, then you will see what happens c squared minus c plus 1 equals 0. This is a quadratic, unfortunately, it doesn't have any solutions. What is it called? Casus irreducibile? Something like that. Anyways, we can still solve it using complex numbers. So let's go ahead and do it. So remember, c is, the values of c are going to be complex numbers, but c is also equal to a cubed. So it's going to be interesting because we're going to be finding the cube roots of a complex number. So let's go ahead and find the complex number first. What is uh, what are the values of c? Well, the values of c from quadratic formula is negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is negative 3, and I can write it as square root of 3i divided by 2. And I can just write this as 1 plus root 3i over 2 and 1 minus root 3i over 2. And since this is a complex number, I can write it in polar form. And we're going to be talking about polar form in another problem, which is, I think, uh, going to come up in a few days. I'm not exactly sure when, but you're going to see a really nice exponential equation that involves some interesting stuff. Anyways, that's going to come up later, but let's go ahead and do this. Um, this can be written as 1 half plus square root of 3 over 2i. And here's what you need to do. First of all, find the modulus, the absolute value of the complex number. For this one, it's 1. Therefore, we can just write this as c equals 1 half plus square root of 3 over 2i. And this can be written as cosine pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. Because those are the sine and cosine values for pi over 3, which is 60 degrees. And you don't have to worry about the r, the modulus, the because it's 1. Make sense? Hopefully it does. Okay. But this is a cubed. So I have to cube root this number. But cubing cube rooting complex numbers is super duper easy if you know the rule. What is that called? The Moivre? I can never say that name. But all you have to do is take the argument and then divide by 3. Isn't that easy? A from here becomes cosine pi over 9 plus i sine pi over 9. By the way, yesterday, it's actually today, but it's going to be yesterday when this video publishes, uh, I shared with you a post that involves the trigonometric value. Anyways, because I was thinking about trigonometric values, I found something and I want to share with you. Anyways, so this is one of the values of A. Obviously, there's more values. But this is A. And B, what is B? B is easy to find because AB is 1. Look at that. So B is 1 over A. But how do you find the reciprocal of a complex number? 
Easy. You just have to change the sign. It's like cosine pi over 9 minus i sine pi over 9. Why? Because if you multiply a and b here in polar form, you're going to get from difference of two squares, cosine squared minus i squared sine squared, which is cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. Make sense? Hopefully it does. Sorry, I have to kind of speed through this so that it, the video is not going to be too long. So, what am I doing? Well, I got the value of a and b, so I can write my x. x is a plus b, remember? So it's going to be cosine pi over 9 plus i sine pi over 9 plus cosine pi over 9, running out of space, minus i sine pi over 9 squeeze. Okay, these two values cancel out, and we end up with the x value, real cool, real clean, 2 times cosine pi over 9. Do you know the trigonometric or radical value of pi over 9? I don't, and I, I couldn't find it. If you do, please share with us the link. Anyway, so this is one of the values, so I'm going to call it x sub 1, because there's more values, because uh, 1 half, or this number, uh, this number has 3 cube roots. This is one of them. The other one is, hmm, let's see, we have to add... 1 third of 2 pi, which is 2 pi over 3, which can be written as 6 pi over 9. Anyway, it's just going to be 2 cosine 7 pi over 9. And then the third one we can write as 2 cosine 5 pi over 9. You can do this easy, but those are going to be the solutions. And let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. The second method uh, will give you a different perspective, but we're still going to be using trigonometry, but in a more interesting way. All right. So for the second method, I'm going to go ahead and make a substitution, but this time I'm going to set x equal to 2u, okay? 2u. Happy birthday to you if it's your birthday. So let's go ahead and replace it, um, x with 2u, that's going to give you 8u cubed minus 6u equals 1. Why did I do that? Because I'm going to take advantage of the triple, what is that called? Triple angle formula. Divide both sides by 2, and you're going to get something super duper nice because this looks like cosine of 3 alpha. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you set u equal to cosine alpha, make sure uh, u is between negative 1 and positive 1 inclusive. So we have to make sure of that, but you're going to get the following. 4 cosine cubed alpha minus 3 cosine alpha equals one half, and the left-hand side of this equation is equivalent to cosine of three alpha. Isn't that cool? So it's equal to one half. Now we're thinking about uh, cosine of which angle is equal to one half, and that is pi over three as before. So three pi can be written as, okay. Three pi can be written as pi over three plus two and pi, or we can write three pi as, so from here, let's go ahead and find it first pi over 9 plus 2 and pi over 3. Or we can write that 3 pi as uh, 2 pi minus pi over 3. That's going to be 5 pi over 3 plus 2 and pi. And then we're going to get alpha equals 5 pi over 9 plus 2 and pi over 3. Okay, great. So from here, basically, we're going to get the following values, right? And remember, the solutions are going to be, u is going to be cosine alpha. So let's go ahead and find the u values. u is going to be cosine of pi over 9, or u can be cosine of 5 pi over 9, or I can just add 2 pi over 3 to this, which is four, uh, 6 pi over 9. That's going to give me 7 pi over 9. Or we can go ahead and add the same thing here, and it's going to give me cosine of 11 pi over 9. But why did I get four values? I'm solving a cubic. I'm getting four values because if you look at these two values, they're equivalent. If you look at 7 pi over 9 and 11 pi over 9, their sum is 2 pi. Therefore, their cosines are equal, which is going to end up with a single solution. Make sense? So from here, we get the same solutions. X is going to be 2 cosine pi over 9. X is going to be 2 cosine 5 pi over 9. And then x is going to be 2 cosine 7 pi over 9. And here is the graph of the situation showing you all the intersection points. You do see four coordinates, but three intersection points. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.